created interview questions. One batch was for all candidates and another batch was for leadership. So now I'm just gonna take a little bit of time to go through these interventions. And all of this is on the portal for you. So since we did this with grant dollars, we can give it away for free. So it's all on the portal, the interview questions, the candor model, uh, the worksheets that you can do with your staff, it's all there for you. Um, and so, candor, as it sounds, you know, the, the, the idea behind this is that what we learned from the research is that psychological safety is what makes interdisciplinary teams effective. And when these kinds of teams are effective, everything benefits. The clients get better, the staff are more engaged at their work, um, just everything that you can think of that's kind of that downward no just jump in real quick. I just yeah. want to point out that psychological safety is not rainbows and puppies. It doesn't mean that everybody gets along and there's never any conflict. What psychological safety means is that those of you who are sitting in the back who might not be sure that day one, my friend looked up at me like he's calling me out. I promise I love you. But if you are not sure that you should have a seat at the table, we're allowing you that. We're saying we're going to accept what you bring here, regardless of your experience, because your value here is valuable to us, right? That's what true psychological safety is. We may not agree, and those of you who are in senior leadership understand that sometimes we have to make those difficult decisions, but listening to other folks doesn't mean you have to agree with them. It just means you accept that information they're giving to you, and we tie all of that in to what the ultimate mission is, which is changing people's lives who need us. Yes, I love that. And this image is, is meant to capture what it takes to get to someone speaking up. So that's the action that we're wanting someone to do is to speak up and disagree with their supervisor or the peer to speak up and disagree with the doctor, right? Um, to do it in front of one another rather than the side sub meetings. And so the idea here is that if you're going up a mountain and there's a, a long winding road that you wouldn't want to do that in a car without guardrails, right? It would be terrifying. And why would you? And in the same way, why would staff communicate openly without guardrails around, okay, you're asking us to do this, but how are you gonna protect us as we start to take those risks, right? And so this is kind of the mountain that they go up. They come in with the mental models, like what we talked about, all your prior workplace experience, worldviews, beliefs. Then there are the systems and structures that are at play, so that's the company you work at, right? How do they deal with um, performance issues? You know, that could be getting in the way of anybody feeling safe on your team. So sometimes you have to look at the structures and systems that are uh, already in place. Then the relationships, that's where this takes uh, place, right, in candor. The relationships and then leading to the actions of that speaking up behavior, which as Joe said, is not just being kind, right, but a lot of disagreeing um, and working through. And so to really uh, share a bit more, this is the acronym for candor. And so we'll see how it lands with you and what you think about, hey, what if the team that I'm part of, or maybe a team I was part of worked like this, how might it be different? And how would it feel different? So C is for context. And that is, when we come together as a team, does everyone have the same information? Have you ever been part of a meeting where you realized, I do not know what this person is talking about but no one did a level setting of, okay, let's just make sure we're on the same page by having all the information. Or the agenda came out five minutes ago and I haven't had a chance to look at it. Yeah. Or yeah. my supervisor sent me a 10 paragraph email and there was no way in hell I was actually gonna read it before this meeting. Exactly, things like that, right? And then A is attunement. So you can tell I'm a therapist by choosing that word, right? But attuning is kind of like the radio dial of finding the station and then it's clear. So attuning in a, in a meeting is, oh, I noticed that you shut down when I said that. Can I check in with you? And not just the leader doing that, but the team growing to be comfortable enough with one another where they can do that with one another rather than just the leader facilitating that, right? So this is really a mutual attunement. Notions. I needed an N-word, but we're just going to say ideas, right? It's probably going to be an easier word there. Um, the idea here is that the 
the team has a shared curiosity. So asking lots of questions, right? I'm sure you've been part of meetings where there are a lot of assumptions made about what's been said, when maybe we should ask more questions before we jump to those assumptions. D is for discussion. So as we mentioned before, calling people in, right? So if someone feels more shy or reserved, it might feel like being called out of, hey, what do you think about this? But really the spirit here is diversity of thought of, no, we want you to contribute to everything. Uh, we want everybody involved. We want to hear the different opinions. Um, and so as opposed to it feeling like being called out, it's really being called in. O is outcome. And so the goal here is there's no top-down decision making. There is shared decision making. And so for every meeting in which Joe's team can attest to this, and for the decisions that they make, they either reach a consensus or a compromise. That feels very different from uh, top-down decision making. I'm blanking on what else that would be called. I'm sure somebody can help Scary. Me. Scary, right. <laughs> it is scary, especially as a leader, because you're saying, hold on, I'm responsible. So if this is a bad decision, I've got to own it. But again, that doesn't mean if you as the leader disagree, you have to go with that. So it's not just about doing what the majority says. It's not a vote, it's not a democracy. But it's also not, yeah, that's just not gonna happen, I don't wanna hear it. It's, I hear what you're saying, let me digest that, I'm curious about it, and then here's the decision that I think we need to go with. And then the last is shared responsibility. So this means whatever we talk about in the meeting, that people are, it, the, the responsibility is spread out. Instead of one person saying, hey, I'll do everything we talked about. No, there's an expectation that we're dividing up what we've talked about here. So you can see how the spirit of this feels very different from a meeting where you're being talked at, right? Or being told what to do. Or what that could have just been an evening. 